Marcelo Tigre, uh, uh, a guy also that I trained with many years here in Brasilia. He's he's he had also those crazy uh, black belt in Hawaii and stuff. He fought a bunch of exactly Hawaii with Egan right? yeah. with Egan. Yeah, yeah. He went to Hawaii. Here's a funny story on that one, right? So Marcelo Tigre, he you know before he could even leave Brazil, he he was like Carlo. You know what I'm gonna do? You know he'd been to the pen, and so you know my dad spoke on his behalf over at the U.S. Embassy and gave him a good you know good review. And he he's like any smart guy. Marcelo, I have to, you know, take my hat off to him. He was able to get his uh, U.S. Uh, visa, you know, visa and go to the States. And he went over to Hawaii, man. He made a career, a little career over there. Oh, well, not a career. I mean, he'd already had a career, but he made a little bit of a rivalry over there and uh, opened up a gym. And so pretty funny, man. But, yeah, I've known Marcelo Chigre for, for years. Wow. He's actually here in Brasilia. Yeah, I talk to him every week because – He's wow. got a couple guys that I help and stuff. I let him move around on my, you know, I got a cage and everything. Got a little, I got a little spot here. Yeah, You'd like it, Chris. I'm pretty sure it's old school. You know, we got, we got yeah. some speed bags. We got all the boxing implements too. We got the lines on the ground to work the angles and stuff. Nice. It's old now, school, man. Marcel now, Tigre is one of those crazy guys. Just for, for people, Marcel Tigre is one of those crazy guys that people are worried about him following the rules. And this is when there's like two oh, yeah. fucking rules. Hey, hey, I'm not even joking, Miguel. I seen him drink. I seen him drink goat blood. Ooh. So <laughs> in yeah, yeah, in 1998, man, I'll I'll, I'll uh, never forget one time. Him at that time, at that time, he was he was uh, fighting the Valetudo circuit here in Brazil, and. Uh, his one of his you know his main sparring partner his main training partner was one of the guys that that had taken me in as a jiu-jitsu uh instructor my jiu-jitsu instructor black belt sandro sandro bala so it was sort of like sparring partners at the time but i mean sparring yeah right like not like they it's not like part proper sparring like we do now with like you know timers and like headgear and like coaches and water and a ring at the time it was like that's for weak people. In their man. freaking speedos, tap, you know, like a mix of like open hand. Every once in a while, you might slip a, a freaking punch in there, you know, whatever. But like need, I, I've been needing hardcore. like, like hardcore. Like, what are you? Yeah. And then later, I'm looking at these tapes. I'm like, that was stupid. This is stupid. <laughs> You're not, you know, like. I don't know, man. Just is funny stuff, man. Yeah, funny right stuff. Tell me about the goat blood, though. Quick. Goat blood. So, I, yeah. Anyways, I, I show up to Jiu-Jitsu one day, and uh, and Marcelo's down there as well. And I see his cards parked out front. At the time, he had an Opala, Preta, a black Opala. It's like an Impala, right? Opala, Impala here in Brazil. It's like a – it was a lowered Impala. He had a lowered Impala here in Brazil. He's a – Marcelo's a gangster, dude. He <laughs> he does all sorts of nefarious shit here in Brasilia. Dude's a gangster, bro. He's run for like office here in Brasilia. But anyways, okay. So I go downstairs. I saw his car out there, and you know, there's always lots of dudes in there and stuff, everything. Go downstairs, and I I see everybody's over in the corner. Not everybody, but I see a, the the main group of my instructors are over in the corner and everything. And I look over, and all I could see was them hunched over, and I and I see Marcelo take it putting his hands down and all of a sudden drinking something. It was red. And I come back later, you know, I put on my gear and I come back onto the mat and everybody's all right, you know, huddle up or, you know, get in line formation for, uh, you know, start, start running, start the, start the jujitsu training. And one of, one of my friends was like, you want some? I'm like, what, what is that? Sangi, sangi your kid, sangi your carnero, like goat blood. And then later I was asking him about that. And he's like, yeah, you know, that was a habit I picked up in the Northeast of Brazil in an impoverished uh, state of Rio Grande do Norte, where he came from. They, they, they really do that, you know, well, they do that when they, when, when they, when, well, when they fresh kill the, the animal, they, it, that's what he said. They just big old callus of, of, and fill it up and sort of like, like sh shot that stuff. I'm like, man, that's, that's just not hygienic to me personally, but I even knew that, you know, as an 18 year old, but I was fascinated, but I was, I was like, Oh man, that's so hardcore. You know, I was like, that's like at the time, me, I, 
<laughs> well, I, I <laughs> thought I was a hardcore dude. Cause I, I thought I was hardcore because I was slunking eggs at the time. I was 18. I was doing right. the Rocky One, right? I was yeah. I was slunking eggs at that time. I thought I was hardcore. And I see the guy game. messing with blood. Hey, hey. Uh, they're yeah, like, you pussy, people, we're in Brazil, we're drinking ghost blood. Yeah, that's there's a lot of people that eat <laughs> raw meat. There's a lot of like raw meat, like dietary people, and they swear by it. Like, I've, I got a buddy that swears by drinking like goat blood. He's, he does it every single day. All right, so you're in 